Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going back to a tier list, and this time, we're going to be going over one that I've been playing with for a while, but I think now I've boiled it down, I've refined it to people that I think cover all the stages of brain damage, okay? We're going to be going through fighters that I believe have the most notable symptoms of brain damage, CTE. In some cases, they might not have brain damage, they just might be have just a a smidgen of the tism. We'll get to that in a second. Before I begin, please consider a like, comment, subscribe. You guys have been helping me out, lady. We are just above 4,000 subscribers, which is absolutely wild. We went from like, you know, getting around 20 subscribers a day to now we're getting over 100, which maybe isn't the most compared to your other big channels, but at the same time, that means a lot to me. And with that out of the way, I'm going to keep that going. Let's get started. Number one, we're going we're gonna to start off how we're going to go with Tony Ferguson. Now listen, I'm not saying Tony Ferguson was normal before the Justin Gaethje fight. All I'm saying, we, we, we were closer to normal, okay? We got the, uh, we have the incident where he believes that there were government agents in his walls and he drove his family out to the desert because he thought the rapture was happening. Yeah, no, that, that's a tough one to defend, my man. Like, that's something you don't, like, fighters don't even bring that up at the press conferences, because it is one of those darker subjects. That's why I was surprised when Colby started bringing it up. Tony Ferguson should not be fighting anymore. In all honesty, him being able to survive three rounds kind of proves to me Patty just isn't that good. Yeah, I threw another, I threw another side at Patty. I'm just going to keep doing it. Tony Ferguson. In all honesty, bro's probably cooked. Like, I know, we're, I think I, I, we started a little bit too hot, but don't worry, we're going to have multiple people in our S tier because, I mean, we kind of have to. Yeah, Tony Ferguson is ab absolutely cooked, my man. I think the Justin Gaethje fight is what cracked him, but I think the Michael Chandler KO is what, I, I think that ended everything, okay? Bro turned 45 years old for about a millisecond. Yeah, I, I think Tony's, I think Tony Ferguson's pretty cooked right about now. Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje has to be one of the few UFC fighters in MMA history that somehow gained brain cells throughout of his career. How? How do we go from Justin Gaethje in the beginning of his career saying, I would gladly take two punches to hit you one time, to being able to outstrike Rafael Fiziev, who by all regards should be piecing up Justin Gaethje, and head kick KOing Dustin Poirier, for the first head kick he's ever thrown in his entire career. In, in all honesty, I think brain damage makes him stronger. I, I just doesn't... Uh, it, it makes no sense to me. He's actually the exact opposite of a other fighter on this list that we're going to get to in a, in, a few, in a few minutes. But Justin Gaethje... Listen, don't get me wrong. Bro, bro is also going to be cooked. But at the same time, it makes zero sense that how we've gained brain cells throughout the years. However, his, his nose has been flattened. Like, his voice has completely changed. Like, I didn't he, didn't he say Charles Oliveira fixed his deviated... Maybe that's what happened. Maybe the reason that he gained fight IQ after the Charles Oliveira fight is now he's getting more oxygen to the brain. Charles Oliveira might have unironically made Justin Gaethje a better fighter by fixing his nose for him. You know what? We've moved from cooked, I'm going to say a low A tier. Like, I'm sorry, you, you can't tell me that. You know what? B tier. B plus. Nate Diaz. Bro, I man, we got all the heavy hitters. Admittedly, this is kind of a tough tier list to do. But at the same time, Nate, Nate Diaz, I don't think people are going to disagree with me. It's, Nate, it's definitely a little bit of CTE. A whole lot of brain damage. A sprinkle of the tism. And some childhood trauma. If you guys remember my cursed basis for MMA... That is how you would make a Nate Diaz. The CTE is strong with him, okay? Uh, like, just look up Nate Diaz at the start of his career and look at him now. Like, j just the way that he speaks has completely changed. It's like a reverse Raul Rosas Jr. I'm going to say Nate Diaz is probably an A tier. Actually, I don't even know. Somehow he has a chin. Like, it makes no sense. He got knocked out earlier in his career by Thompson... And then somehow got a better chin later in his career. Like, it doesn't make sense. But at the same time, like, 
If you look up UFC fighter brain damage, Nate... <laughs> Nate Diaz is one of the first ten people that you see in the image section, okay? Like, just for that reason alone, you gotta put him in A tier. Sean Strickland. Listen. We've all heard Sean Strickland talk. We know there's brain damage in there. It's just a matter of... What, was he always like that? Or was it induced? I would argue... There was always that little bit of Strickland in him. But I think the motorcycle accident changed everything. Part of the reason that Sean Strickland fights the way that he does in that upright posture is because his, I believe it was, he's missing a part of his muscle in his leg that stops him from being able to change levels. Like, the motorcycle accident, I think, gave us our modern incarnation of Strickland. I, I think that caused the head trauma. Like... He spars more than any other UFC fighter, but gets hit less than all of them. We've all heard that stat. I think the motorcycle accident changed the man. I'm actually going to say... He's the most outlandish in the way that he speaks, but the problem is... It's, it, it's weird shit that he says. It's base, don't get me wrong. But it's coherent. I'm actually going to say C+. I'm going to say C+, plus, just because of how coherent he is when he speaks. Like, listen, for every five crazy things that he says, he says one thing that's like, that's actually a good point. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in C tier, not in our D tier. Most definitely there's some brain damage there, but not too much. Tito Ortiz. Cooked. Bro, his melon is fried, okay. Tito, it, it, it Tito talking. Look, do I need to say more? Like, I don't even think I need to say more. Bro is in our S tier, the original CTE. Like, he was the ground zero of CTE. Tito, we started looking into CTE and brain damage and fighters the moment Tito Ortiz started, like, stumbling over his words when he was talking about his training regimen. We've all heard that clip. Every Monday, I train seven days. Every Tuesday, I train another seven days. Like... Cooked. Bryce Mitzel. A tier, dude. A tier. Okay. Where do I start with Bryce Mitzel? Okay. Flat Earther. Well, like, we, we got to get that out of the way. Like, we, we, we can't talk about brain damage and UFC fighters without bringing up Flat Earther. In all honesty, Rampage Jackson should also be on here because he believes there's a firmament. I don't think I'm going to start beefing a comment section, but at the same time, I might. Br Bryce Mitzel. Bro was tweeting about the Super Bowl and Taylor Swift. So apparently, according to Bryce Mitchell, Taylor Swift is 500 years old and uses blood magic to maintain her fit. Need I say more? Joss Emmett knocked Bro into epilepsy. Ilya Toporia bullied him. Dan Ige, after doing what he did to Andre Philly, did that a couple times to Bryce Mitzel. Like, all I'm saying, Bryce Mitzel was already loopy before we started, but you take a little bit of country, a whole lot of Christianity, mix in some, p probably a lot, a little bit more poverty. That is how you get a Bryce Mitzel. A tier, CTE included. Yuri Prohaska. I genuinely don't know. I know I'm not the only one to say this, but I, I also believe this. It is very hard to tell when you're talking about people who speak... That's why uh, the majority of the fighters on here are American. Because w Americans can look at other American fighters and let be like, Oh, you're slipping. Okay, like, I, d I don't know if you have brain damage or not. But you probably do. Y Yuri Prohaska is, is either a little, has a little bit of a tism or a heaping lot of brain damage. That's the problem with foreign fighters who speak English as a second language. Is I can't tell... If it's like, I, I genuinely can't tell if it's CT or autism, dude. Like, it, it's that similar. Yeah, you know, like, it, let's be real here. If Yuri Prohaska was just some dude from Nebraska, and he talked the way that he did, we would be like, downs. Like, he talks that way. I love Yuri Prohaska, too. Probably my second favorite light heavyweight. But at the same time, I, I genuinely don't know. I'm going to put him in D tier. Because he could just have a wicked chin, 
but he just has a little bit of tism and speaks English as a second language. So I'm going to put him in D tier because I don't know. Michael Chandler. C tier. I would actually put him... I'm actually I'm going to put him beneath Justin Gaethje. This is what I was talking about. Justin Gaethje has somehow gained brain cells throughout his career. Michael Chandler has lost it. Not just that, has also lost fight IQ while gaining fight promotion ability. It makes zero sense. Michael Chandler somehow has gained the ability to be amazing on the microphone. But there's a little thing that I like to call the Chandler Syndrome, named after him. And what the Chandler Syndrome is, is if you're going into a fight with somebody that you stylistically have a huge advantage over. That being Michael Chandler having good wrestling. I'm just not going to use it. Instead, I'm going to fight stylistically as risky as I possibly can for the sake of pay-per-view points. I respect it as a fan. At the same time, I don't respect it as a guy who is betting on Michael Chandler. Like, here's the thing. Part of the reason Bro is still ranked in the top five at lightweight, despite not doing anything for the past year, is because, yes, I know Conor McGregor's probably lost. He's over 35 years old right now. He's already done a lot in his career. Michael Chandler is probably going to go guns a-blazing in the first round, going straight into a counter left. Stylistically, he should win very, very easily. I can see Conor McGregor getting a KO finish in the first round, and we're like, oh, Conor McGregor's back. No, Chandler just has a little bit of the syndrome. B tier. Anthony Sm Brother is so cooked. Yes, no. He, he... Stop fighting. Khalil Roundtree, so that, that should have been the end. Johnny Walker should have been the end, actually. Another dude on this list. Those two should have sealed the deal. I have maintained this the entire time I've been getting content crazy. As an MMA fighter, if you are at the point where you feel like yourself are never going to win a belt, if the belt is no longer a possibility, stop fighting. It's just not worth it anymore. Especially if you're Anthony Smith and somehow has a desk job. You have a podcast that you do with Michael Bisbang. The UFC has employed you as a fight analyst. Despite... The clear signs of brain damage. Like, bro said Jim Miller would beat Brock Lesnar. Need I say more, okay? He also said John Jones isn't good. I'm gonna try to get the quote right. Anthony Smith says it's not that John Jones is good, he's just decent at everything. Brother, you are aware when we bring up the most dominant title performances in the history of the sport, people will bring up Anthony Smith versus John Jones. Now, I'll respect you for keep going because Anthony Smith could have pulled an Aljamain Sterling and got a DQ win against John Jones because that was a blatant illegal knee. But at the same time, I don't think that was real, as much of him being a dog as it was a little bit of the CTE sewing being already dominated for the first every single round of that fight, only to continue that beating. Like, need I say more, bro, it's cooked. Michael Bisbing. A tier. A tier, okay? How is it that Chael Sonnen has, is still one of the most coherent UFC fighters ever? Like, I, I think at this point, the UFC, like, champions him. Whenever anybody wants to bring up brain damage, they'll show them Chael Sonnen and be like, oh, there's no brain damage in the UFC. Look at Chael. He can speak perfectly. Meanwhile, bro was on a 14-minute conversation about somebody that he might have saw in a hallway. Okay? Le M Michael Bisbing is like, he, he definitely brain damage. Bro lost an eye. Bro's a dog. Like, I, I say all this. Every single one of them's a dog. Michael Bisbing lost an eye versus Vitor Belfort. Also has come in with some outlandish takes. But respect to the man. Bro's, bro's egg is also scrambled. A tier. Islam Makachev. I genuinely don't know. I'm going to put him at the same level as a Yuri Prohaska. Because let's say this. Is, let's say Islam Makachev was just some random hillbilly from Appalachia. He comes from the mountains, but this time it's from Appalachia. 
we would think bro had brain damage and, and probably has a little bit of the inbreeding in the tism. What, that's what we would say. But since he speaks English as a second language and is from Dagestan, we're like, oh no, he's perfectly fine. I genuinely don't know. Like, I don't think Islam's been hit enough to have a significant amount of brain damage, like are cooked. But if he was from America, bro is easily in our A tier. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, the, the English as your second language kind of saves you from the brain damage allegations. But not this other guy, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker is definitely probably going to be in our A tier. A few more socks, bro, is going to be cooked. He, he, like, he ha doesn't have a chin. Like, it, let, let's just admit that. Johnny Walker doesn't have a chin. He probably, he, he lost it in his amateur career or early pro career. I mean, he's another one. It's, it's either autism, CTE, English as your second language. But in this case, I believe it's all three. It goes in our A tier. Bro, it's crazy. Steep Amy Oshibs. I would say he's above... I would say... Okay. I'm going to put him bottom of A tier. Stipe's top of... Top of A tier. I, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. This is what I mean. If Stipe came from, like, Slovakia, or, like, the Czech Republic, we would think, oh, English has a second language. No. Bro's from New Jersey. Or something like that. And bro talks like that. Brain damage. Like, bro's been fighting for a while. He's been hit by some really, really big guys. One of those being Francis Ngannou. There's 100% brain damage going on. I don't even blame you. He just wants to fight John and get the bag and go. Brennan Moreno. I'm going to say C tier. Like, here's, here's the thing. He would go in D tier because he speaks English as a second language and he does speak it, like, relatively well. Bro has been in too many wars for me to say he doesn't have brain damage. The Pantoja fight alone was CTE inducing, let alone the Figueredo fights. Like, 100%. I, I, I love Brennan Moreno. He's, he's at our Son Strickland level of CTE. Raul Rosas Jr. Cooked cooked. If you've taken so much damage that you look like that one orange dude from the Muppets, you're cooked, brother. Okay? If I... I'm trying not to be too mean. Raul Rosas Jr. 100% came into the UFC with brain damage. Like, here, here's the thing. I remember when they first were, like, touting him as, like, this is going to be the next generation of UFC fighters. And they so was Raul Rosas Jr. at 17 years old. All I'm thinking to myself, listen, taking brain damage w by the time that you're six years old is not good for you. Like, I think growing up until you're about 16 and not taking any brain damage, I think that's better than getting brain damage the moment you're out the womb. Like, Raul Rosas Jr. looks like he came out the womb and immediately got cauliflower ear. It looks like they pulled him out by it. And then just got palm striked by his dad the moment he came out. Like, bro, his nose flat and ears are, like, he's cooked. We're done. Came in at UFC 17 years old. He's not going to know his name by the time he's 30. Marab Devazvili. Low, low C tier. Like, I, I know. I, I I've expressed some hate towards Marab Devazvili, mostly because what he did to my boy Jose Aldo. I, I, at the same time, I'm getting over it. But brother, fight for the belt. Just fight for the belt, okay? I don't even care anymore. Just please do it. Like, it, we're, we've really gotten to the point that if Cejudo beats you, you're probably going to have to fight Umar Nurmagomedov. Like, the, that's the situation that we're in. There's also a scenario where you beat Cejudo... And they make O'Malley fight Ilya if Ilya beats Volkanovski. And you're still going to have to fight Umar. Like, that is really what we're talking about right now. Because, whether it be blind faith, tism, or CTE, 
you have somehow been tricked by Aljamain Sterling and your coaching staff to not accept the title shot. Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, English as a second language is actually kind of funny. That's why he goes in C tier. But again, speaks good enough English for, for me to recognize that there's a little bit of CTE going on. Marvin Vittori, Goblin, Orc. I'm going to say B tier. B tier more than just a Gatesy. The chin on Marvin Vittori, though, needs to be studied in a lab. People talk about who has the best chin in UFC, and they bring up people like Max Holloway. Here's a fact. If people are setting records for most strikes landed in your division, I understand they aren't doing it on Max Holloway, but there are people in that division that are setting records. If you're setting records for most punches landed, they probably don't hit hard in your division. Marvin Vittori was getting hit with some of the most malicious strikes I have ever seen from the Killa Gorilla Jared Kennan here, and was eating that like a six inch foot long. That no, that does make sense. Six inch foot long sub from Subway. Nothing. Like Robert Whitaker somehow hurt Marvin Vittori. It's just a testament to how hard Robert Whitaker can hit. But bro also has brain damage. Like, we can't deny that. Bro talks like an Uruk from Lord of the Rings. B tier. Conor McGregor. It's either a coke addiction, CTE, toxoplasmosis, ADHD, poverty. It's all of them. Okay? That is how you make a Conor McGregor. At the same time, I think the craziest thing that he's ever done is continue to fight even though bro... Isn't his net worth like about a billionaire at this point? Like he sold his whiskey brand and is about a billionaire. I am going to say, in all honesty, probably a low B tier. Like, I, I think this turned out pretty good. In our cooked category, we got Tony Ferguson, Tito Ortiz, Anthony Smith, and Raul Rosas Jr. Okay? Stipe you could put up. Bryce Mitchell. Here's the thing. I don't know if he might have been like this his entire life. But the moment you start talking about Taylor Swift being 500 years old, vampiric, and uses white blood cells to maintain her figure, and you, you've you lost me completely. I can forgive the Flat Earth. Rampage Jackson's a Flat Earther. I love him. Brain damage. I think this turned out all, all good. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. I'm going to try to get a, um, one more video out today to make up for yesterday. This was supposed to come out yesterday. Tell me what you think in the comment section below. If you have a video that you want me to do, leave it down there. I'll check it out. And again, thank you guys for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. It means the absolute most to me. And with that being said, see you next time. Thank you for watching.